Welcome. This presentation covers the module on how to prepare and deliver community trainings in the Data for Human Rights curriculum. When people are done with that first activity, you'll, you'll move on now on how to deliver trainings. And again, we'll go back to our, our four principles of ICI facilitate. When you are delivering a training, inclusivity, being inclusive means calling on specific individuals or, or just general types of people if it's a large room um, who you've not heard a lot from. So it's not true everywhere, but in a lot of places, men often feel very confident speaking before women. So let's say that in the room, not many women have spoken yet. Well, you might actually point to a few women in the audience and just ask them, do they want to share an experience? Do they want to weigh in with their opinion when it comes to some certain discussion questions? Clear goal is the second principle. At the start of the training, you want to state that clear goal. If you have a feedback mechanism at the end of the training, um, asking your participants how well it went, either with verbal feedback or written feedback, then ask them, did we achieve this goal and how well did we achieve it? Illustration is super important, of course, when you're facilitating. Um, so we're going to come and spend some time talking about exercises and conducting exercises in the next bit here, but also be thinking about, you know, how to illustrate your key points, the visuals, stories, examples, and of course, exercises. And then finally, facilitation here means ensuring that participants are staying on topic, um, that you're seeking balance and, and who is speaking that you're thanking people for their time and effort to be at the training um, and just remain open-minded to things that are being offered as ideas in the training. So let's talk about some specific tips for facilitation. Um, I've got some tips here on lectures, exercises, and facilitating discussions. So for lectures, you just generally want to keep them short and spaced out. Um, it's don't talk for more than 15 minutes at a time. Um, break up your lectures if you have a lot to say. Break it up with exercises and discussions. Now, hopefully you've got some exercises built into your training. I've got a short video here that I want you to actually play and watch. I won't do it here during this video, but I want you to watch this video in the class when you're training. And it covers two rules about introducing exercises to make sure that everyone understands what they need to do and that they get the most out of the exercise. In terms of facilitating discussions, I've got another short video here that is really helpful for thinking about um, how to deal with challenging people in a room. So sometimes you have people who have a lot to say or they want to argue with you as the instructor or they wanna argue with other participants because they have you know, a, something that they wanna talk about, like an unlikely scenario that they really wanna focus on. It can be challenging to manage those kinds of people, but it this gives some really good guidance about how to deal with that. They call it a parking lot where you really listen to what the person is saying and you write it down on a list of things that will get dealt with later so that you can steer the conversation back to what you wanted to discuss and keep things moving forward rather than getting stuck in a long side conversation. So the next slide is actually another video. You're gonna be showing these three videos back to back. It's gonna take probably up to an hour to show all of these videos and discuss what's going on in them. Um, but this video is really helpful because it talks through just facilitating your first workshop if you've never done facilitation before. And they have a very simple um, activity that you're gonna be facilitating. It's called Note and Vote. And it's something that is used very commonly in workshops, this approach where you put stuff on sticky notes, um, but rather than just putting stuff on sticky notes, doing the next thing, which is trying to prioritize them. And so usually, you know, an activity that could take two hours doing sticky notes or even a whole hour doing sticky notes can be condensed and you can really get a lot out of it in a much shorter amount of time using this approach. And so the video talks about how to facilitate this approach. So I recommend watching the video because the next activity, the next activity is actually applying the note and vote approach. So in the next, the second activity of the day is to get two volunteers from the 
participants in the room to actually act as facilitators and use the lessons learned from that video. And we're gonna imagine that the volunteers are delivering the Intro to Data for Human Rights module. And one of the questions, discussion questions in the module is, how might you use your own data for human rights? So what's gonna happen is the two volunteers are going to run a note and vote exercise for this question. And everyone else in the room will participate in that question or participate in that exercise answering that question. And so the, the two facilitators, the two volunteers um, will prepare as is recommended in the video with sticky notes and markers for everybody. Um, the video is going to recommend that you use stickers as part of this voting process, though you don't need stickers. You could also just have participants draw stars or some kind of symbol. The second recommendation in the video is how to guide the note part of the exercise, the sticky note part of the exercise, and then there's a section on how to guide the voting part of the exercise. And so you have to give instructions to introduce these two parts of the exercise. And I want the two volunteer facilitators to practice giving those um, instructions using the two rules that were, we talked about in a previous video. So after you've done this activity, the last bit is just a review of how you're going to use all of the lessons learned in this module for delivering other Data for Human Rights modules. So I just want to remind everyone in the room that there's over 28 modules available at the Data for Human Rights .net website um, in the training materials sections. This includes trainer instructions, a short slide deck, overview, overview video for trainers, plus any demo videos if those are applicable, and a two-page handout in three languages. And I just want to also like address some common questions here, which is, what if you want to deliver a training, but you want to change it just slightly, like you want to adopt the slide examples or something? We absolutely recommend this if you're going to be re-delivering a Data for Human Rights module. You can change the slides. Um, we have them set up right now as Google Slides, which are editable. So you just make a copy into your own Google Drive, make the changes you want, and deliver the module in a more tailored way. And if you're not comfortable working in Google Slides, then one of our modules, Module uh, 2.3, will help you learn that skill. We also have the ability to share the handouts with you um, if you wanted to do further translations or make any edits to those. And if you need to make changes to handouts, you would need to work in Google Docs and module 2.2 will cover that. If you want a handout in a language that's not on our website, we would love that. We would love for you to be able to help us with additional translations. Um, just email us to get access to the Google Doc version so that you can have you can edit the text directly and send it to us and we can upload it to the website. And the final question is, can you combine different modules into a new training? Like you want to use a piece of module 2.2 and a piece of module 1.2. Yes, you can absolutely do that. If you do take material from Data for Human Rights curriculum, which we highly recommend, just please acknowledge us by providing the website in your slide deck. The final piece today is a discussion with participants about how they will actually go about delivering a Data for Human Rights module. We recommend discussing module 1.1, which is the Intro to Data for Human Rights, just because we know that most communities um, receiving training on this curriculum will start with this module. It's required for most of our additional modules. So have participants open up the material for module 1.1 if they haven't already, and really think about would they tailor it, would they shorten it, would they make it longer, would they add different examples, et cetera. And so that's how you'll round out the day when delivering this module. Good luck.